3-1, inequalities and their graphs. So chapter three is going to be all about inequalities. Uh, we're gonna go through some basic stuff. We're gonna go through uh, solving inequalities with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, multi-step. We'll talk about sets, compound and absolute value inequalities, and we'll finish with uh, union intersection. Okay. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what inequalities look like and what their graphs look like. Okay, so our objective is to write a graph, to write, graph, and identify solutions of inequalities. Our essential understanding is an inequality is a mathematical sentence that uses an inequality symbol to compare the values of two expressions. We can use a number line to visually represent the values that satisfy this inequality. So let's look at our first inequality. Uh, let's write an inequality that represents the verbal expression. All real numbers x less than or equal to negative 7. Now, our basic inequality symbols, which we should know, are less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Okay? Then we can get fancy and say not equal to, which is technically an inequality symbol because these two sides are not equal to each other. Uh, but we're going to focus on the four major ones right there for now. Okay? So let's get back to the problem. All real numbers x less than or equal to negative 7. So all real numbers x less than or equal to negative 7. <coughs> so we're just drawing out the inequality of what the sentence says. 6 less than a number k is greater than 13. So of course, don't forget our rules. So we want to get 6 less than k is greater than 13 but not greater than or equal to. All right. Let's look at the Gata problems. Okay. What is an inequality that represents the verbal expression? So the first one says all real numbers p greater than or equal to 1.5. So p greater than or equal to 1.5. And then... The sum of t and 7 is less than 3. So the sum means addition is less than negative 3. Okay? So the solution to an inequality is any number that makes the inequality true. Most of the time, the solutions are going to have an infinite number of answers. The solutions of the inequality x less than 5 are all real numbers x that are less than 5. You can evaluate an expression to determine whether a value is a solution of an inequality. So if I want to know whether something is a solution of that inequality, I can just substitute. Well, I can put maybe 3 in there. That's true. I can put 13 in there. That's not true. Okay. <clears throat> is the number a solution of 2x plus 1 is greater than negative 3. Well, to figure this out, let's plug in the numbers. So 2, let's plug in negative 3, is greater than negative 3. So that's negative 6 plus 1 is greater than negative 3, which is negative 5 greater than negative 3. Okay, that is not true because negative 5 is less than negative 3. Move this down a little bit. Okay. So, 2 at, whoops, 2. Now we're going to substitute in negative 1 plus 1. Is that greater than negative 3? Well, that's negative 2 plus 1. And that's going to be negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, which is greater than negative 3. So that one actually does work. <coughs> so this... Negative 1 makes the solution true. Negative 3 does not. Okay. Consider these four numbers. Which are solutions to that equation? Well, we can try them all. 13 minus 7 times negative 1. Is that greater than or less than or equal to 6? So that's 13 plus 7, which is 20. 
Is that less than or equal to 6? So that's a no. Okay. I could try 0. I could try 1. I could try 3. I could try them. Keep trying all numbers okay, um, until I get something that is the solution. Uh, in the next problem, we'll actually solve these for the solution. But if I plug in 0, I get 13 less than 6. That doesn't work. But if I plug in 1, 13 minus 7 times 1, is that less than or equal to 6? Well, that's 13 minus 7. <laughs> and 13 minus 7 is 6. And is 6 less than or equal to 6? Yes. Okay. And then we'll have uh, 3 is going to work as well. So in problem 2, how is the related equation 2x plus 1 equal to negative 3? So how is this related to that? Okay. Well, the difference with the equal sign is now we are going to solve for a specific point. So when we solve this, subtract 1 from both sides to give me 2x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to negative 2. Okay. When I solve this, I now have something called the boundary point. So when I look at this equation, and it was uh, greater than, negative 3, ugly greater than. Okay, When I solve that, I know that sort of something is going to happen there. Okay, That's where these two sides are equal to each other. So if I plugged in sub, if I plugged in numbers that are bigger than negative 2, then I'm probably going to get this to work. And if I plug in numbers that are less than negative 2, I'm probably not. Okay, So basically, when we solve equations, uh, we are finding one answer, and when we solve inequalities, we're finding where the answers start or stop. And we can indicate these with these graphs. So when we graph solutions to an inequality, and we can always graph all solutions to an inequality, there's a couple different ways we can do it. We can go n is less than 1. So the open dot shows that it's not a solution because it doesn't say or equal to. So the open dot shows it's not a solution. And we're going to shade to the left. Okay, Shade to the left because less than goes left. A is greater than or equal to 0. So the closed dot shows 0 is a solution. And now we shade to the right Okay, because we want bigger. Going to the right is bigger. F greater than negative 3. Again, that shows that the open circle shows it's not a solution and we shade to the right. <coughs> and negative 2 greater than or equal to x. This is a trickier one, okay? Because we can also write this, notice that this is the only one that has a variable on the right-hand side. Okay, so this is we're saying we're saying that negative two is the biggest thing in this expression. So we can see negative two is the biggest, and we're going to shade to the left. Okay, we can use this property right here to flip the equations around. And it's important to note that when you're trying to figure out which way an inequality goes, you really do want the variable to be on the left-hand side. That way, the inequality usually points to the way you want it to go. So when we look at this one, what is the graph of 2 is greater than or equal to a? Okay. Usually, like we said, the variable on the left-hand side is easier to graph, but I can do this. Okay. 3, 4, 1, 0. Okay. So my graph is going to start here. That's going to be my boundary point. That's where the stuff happens. Okay? So when I graph this solution, I want 2 to be the biggest thing. Or I can rewrite this as A. And now, do we see that the inequality symbol opens towards the 2? It has to do the same as well. And you can now see that the graph is going to go to the left. Uh, so let's graph all these inequalities.
and let's just put them all on the graph here. There's negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Get that stuff. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, x is greater than negative 4. That means we're going to put an open circle there, and my graph is going to go that way. For C is less than zero, we're going to put an open circle there. My graph is going to go that way. Okay. And finally, the trickier one, I can leave it like that and realize that three is going to be the smallest. And my graph does not go left, it goes right. Or I can rewrite this with the open mouth always still going to the same thing. Okay, so n is greater than or equal to negative to positive three, and we put a thing there, dot there, close dot, because it says or equal to. <clears throat> and of course, the way to remember which one of these is greater than or less than, we're always reading these symbols left to right. So when we look at the symbol, right, the mouse always points towards the bigger uh, value. So we call this one greater than, this one less than, because the C is smaller, right? The mouth is opening towards zero. Okay. Like a Pac-Man or a crocodile or any other way you want to help remember it that you've heard before. <clears throat> okay? So let's write in inequalities for the graphs. So when I look at this graph, there's my boundary point. It has a solid circle. The graph is going to the right, so I know that it's going to look something like that. And I'm going to say x is greater than or equal to negative 1. For this one, I'm going to say x is less than, not less than or equal to, because it's an open circle. And my point is 4. My boundary point is 4. The place where the graph is, something is happening. Let's do that again. So that would be x is less than negative 3. And then just for fun, for b, let's put the variable on the right-hand side. So when we do that, okay, 0 is the boundary point, and 0 is also the smallest place on the graph. So we're going to say 0 is less than or equal to x. Normally, we would just write it like that. We wouldn't try to be uh, fancy. Okay. Uh, finally, let's try some real-world problems. Okay. So when I look at this picture right here, it says that uh, trail rides are starting at 19.99. So let's call my variable cost of a ride okay so my inequality is going to be that they're starting at 1999 which means they could get more expensive if you want to go longer so we're going to see that c is greater than or equal to 1999 okay. i'm sure you've seen mile per hour signs everywhere usually not eight probably more like 25 35 45 65, things like that. So my variable here is going to be the speed in miles per hour. And my equation is going to be that S is less than or equal to 8 because this is a speed limit sign. Okay, So that is the upper level of speed you go. If you see a sign that says speed limit 25, that doesn't mean you go over 25. It means you go have to go under 25. Okay. In part B, can the speed be all real numbers less than or equal to 8? Well, not really. Oops. Because, let's clear that off. Not really because we can't go negative speeds. Real numbers means positive numbers and negative numbers. We cannot go negative 10 miles an hour. Okay? Negative 10 miles an hour doesn't mean you go backwards and reverse 10 miles an hour. You're still going 10 miles an hour. So you cannot actually have speeds. You cannot measure speed in a negative number. 
So to review, we have our, we can represent inequalities now with words, with symbols, and with a graph. X is less than three. We have our symbols, and we can see our graph with an open circle going to the left. X is greater than negative two. We have our symbols, open circle, graph going to the right. X is less than or equal to zero. We have our solid circle now with the graph going to the left. And X is greater than or equal to one. We have my symbols there. And now we can see solid circle graph going to the right. Okay. Let's take a look at our lesson check. What algebraic inequality represents all real numbers Y that are greater than or equal to 12? Okay. Uh, are those solutions? Well, when we see this later, we'll actually learn how to solve these equations. But for now, you can just plug them in to see which one is a solution or not. Okay, so negative 1 will not work because 6 times negative 1 minus 3 greater than or equal to 10. That's negative 6 minus 3, which is negative 9 is not greater than or equal to 10. If I plug 0 in there, we just get negative 3 is greater than 10. That's not true either. But for part C, 6 times 3 uh, minus 3 greater than or equal to 10, we have 18 minus 3, which is clearly greater than or equal to 10, 15. What's the graph of 2 is greater than P? Well, here's a nice little graph right here. We would put a boundary, oh, open circle, because it doesn't say we're equal to. And you would want to go to the left, but you don't, because <coughs> the variable is on the wrong side. We would go that way. Inequality that represents this graph right here is going to be x is less than or equal to negative 3. How do you decide whether a number is a solution of an inequality? Plug it in and see if it makes a true statement. That is not a true statement. That is a true statement. So negative 1 is not a solution, and 3 is. What are some situations you can model with x is greater than or equal to 0? Uh, anything. Whole numbers, uh, the score of the Super Bowl, hopefully. Well, it has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? Um, Anything you want to count up, really, that is a real number that must be positive. And how do you how does they differ from solutions that you can model with x is only greater than zero? Um, well, think about think about whole numbers and counting numbers. Whole numbers include zeros. Counting numbers do not. Um, distance, right? Distance has to be greater than zero or else you are in the same place, right? If I want to know how far is it from my house to the house down the street, you can't, that has to be bigger than zero because our houses are not on top of each other. Okay, so just different different ways to model different kind of problems. What is a real-world situation that can, you can represent with the following graph? Uh, anything you can think of that has to be bigger than 15. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not the amount of minutes that it will take you to do the math Excel homework. Okay? Hopefully it will be the other way, but it might take you longer than 15. And eventually, uh, hopefully that it does not go to infinity for the time that it will take you to do your homework. All right? And that is 3-1 inequalities and their graphs.